I'm a representative of Ariel Canada. I travel all of Canada. I help people get to know the ministry, to pray for the ministry, get them connected with our materials, and uh, hopefully help them to come to Camp Shoshana like a family that came uh, just uh, a week ago. And then uh, I do women's conferences. I do a little bit of children's ministry. I also travel the U.S. doing women's conferences and um, not as much children's ministry. So. The heartbeat of Ariel Ministries consists of, a, just like we get a boom boom, we get a double one. So we've got a double mission. Um, first one is uh, the evangelism of Jewish and Gentile people, um, but to the Jew first, according to Romans 1.16. And uh, because when you go to the Jew first, then everybody comes in. We see that in our local congregation in Montreal. We go to the Jew first, and then we get the United Nations come in. And the second uh, heartbeat is discipleship. So we want to help all people grow in their understanding of Scripture by using intensive Bible study um, from a Jewish perspective. So we have a vast array. I've never seen another mission with good materials as in-depth as Ariel Ministries from simpler ones to systematic theology. Well, I share the gospel when I travel uh, as a missionary, whether it's in uh, a church service when I've shared my testimony or a conference. We do door-to-door -door evangelism, which is really important in Montreal, where half of the Jewish uh, population is Orthodox, and uh, there's no other place in the world like it except uh, Melbourne, Australia. And so the chances of meeting somebody Jewish in Montreal uh, who's Orthodox is very high, and we go door to door and distribute scriptures. The Lord had been after this one woman, I'll call her Miriam, for quite a while. And yet one night when she was in a very sad state, um, we knocked on her door and gave her a, a New Testament. She already had a Tanakh. She read Hebrew fluently, and she read the New Testament, and she ended up writing us and later and saying that this little Bible, because little is a New Testament compared to a bigger Old Testament, was bringing her much joy and helping her to know Yeshua. And then she came to our um, congregation because of our second evangelistic outreach, which is radio. And so she heard our Shalom Ariel radio program, which is on five days a week on Montreal and now on BethAriel.ca on the internet. And she heard um, the gospel there. And then she came to a Seder because uh, she heard that she could come to a Seder with Yeshua. And she said, I've never done that. And then um, she started coming to our Bible studies. And then, and eventually, uh, not long after that, I connected with her and uh, she wanted to hear my story and she'd been in a very ultra-Orthodox, we call Lubavitch uh, community, and she had left and she, I explained the gospel to her for hours and hours and she came to faith and uh, really on fire gal. So uh, several different kinds of outreaches, but whether it's door to door, we have Shalom in the Park in Montreal. So we have, uh, we sing messianic music and uh, Israeli music and people come and then we just talk to everybody. We don't just talk to Jewish people. So that's our evangelism. Uh, well, discipleship, I'd say the first thing we want to teach people has to do with number one. It's how to bring somebody Jewish to faith, how to witness uh, to somebody. We do a lot of Jewish evangelism courses, but then we have other programs that uh, start, whether it's um, the Ariel U.S., um, program, which is the 50 free Bible studies called Come and See, to bring people, we, we don't tell them it's really systematic theology, but that's what it is, where they learn about God and they learn about the church, they learn about man, they learn about the enemy. And um, so we have 50 free Bible studies, there are 191 in all, and so these are really great tools, and we have really good books. We, in Ariel Canada, sell materials by a lot of good dispensational authors, uh, whether it's uh, um, Ryrie or um, Walverd or uh, anyway, uh, Tim LaHaye, lots of good authors, as well as, yes, uh, Dr. Fruchtenbaum, which forms the backbone of, our, of any book table that I do. And uh, Jacques Gabizon, my director, has a lot of uh, good materials as well. So I come when I can fill up 
18 feet of table <laughs> when I speak in the church and present the ministry and make lots of things available. So we have lots of good materials, audio, visual, books, everything you want. Camp Shoshana is a wonderful place. My director has once said, this is the next thing to heaven, and I really believe it because you see people from all different colors and cultures and languages, and it's wonderful to be of one mind, as we just were learning in the book of Acts, and to get great teaching that you find very hard to get anymore these days, uh, anywhere. Taking the Bible from a literal hermeneutic or interpretation and a Jewish context and understanding what the hearers of those letters or books uh, would have understood at that time. And to be able to drink it in in class, and it's intense, sure, but, and then talk about it over meals, and, you know, we play together, we dance together, have messianic dancing. It's a wonderful experience that changed my life, and um, there's nothing else like it. And I would encourage everybody to take the opportunity to come for at least a week, and then they'll wish they came for two or three. I came for two, thinking I might not even stay that long, and I begged to stay for three, and then I've become uh, a regular here. I have friends now, people who pray for my ministry. I tell people when I have a church meeting or a women's conference, there are people praying from the Netherlands to New Zealand for our conference tonight because uh, I know people from all over the world now, and we're all connected. And so it's wonderful to really have that pre-heaven experience. <laughs> Jewish evangelism is most opposed by the enemy because his eternal future is tied up with the Jewish people coming to repentance at the end of the tribulation. So he will do anything, I should say they, because the enemy is wide, um, to stop Jewish people from coming to faith. And so we really need prayer. When I travel, I tell people the first thing I need is to garner prayer support. And so we truly need prayer. We have many tools that they can use, whether it's our prayer guide, whether it's um, prayer requests that uh, we, we send out through Ariel Canada. There are lots of ways to pray. And then um, just praying at home for the Bible distribution. As I have traveled, we're setting up teams in Victoria, British Columbia, in Calgary, Alberta, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, as well as the one in Montreal. As I've traveled, I've found the Lord has led me to people who will do that kind of ministry across Canada. So we need, really need prayer for that. And then uh, an, another great way to get involved is just go online. There are tons of free materials, whether it's at bethariel.ca or arielcanada.com or ariel.org for the U.S. website. There's so much free material, great teaching, and you just want to get more. So there are lots of books and things you can get directly online. Someday they'll be teaching online as well. But even for now, there's uh, plenty you can find on YouTube and other places. So there's, uh, I would say, look, come and learn, pray, and then we need financial support to get those radio shows on the air, to um, make our camp facilities comfortable for everyone, for the, our magazine, for the different uh, outreaches that we have. Um, the different missionaries who serve need support. And so um, if people would prayerfully consider that and see what the Lord would have them do, and I hope, um, I would say instead of pray, give, and go, I'd say pray, give, and come to Camp Shoshana. I finally found what I was born to be and do when I came to Camp Shoshana the first year in 2004. I had been a missionary 29 years. I didn't believe a ministry like this existed that had a Jewish heart and yet included everybody and had perfect, I, I don't want to use perfect, next to perfect, nothing is really perfect doctrine, doctrine that I could easily sign my name to. and so. I realized I had been a missionary before doing other things, but this is what I was born to be and do. And when I got involved with Ariel, that's when my family said, what happened to you? You know, how are you? And I'd say, fantastic. And they'd say, Jackie, we've known you your whole life. You've never been fantastic. I said, because I found it. I have found Ariel Ministries, and this is where my heart will be um, till I die. People say, when are you going to stop? working, traveling. I travel more than seven months of the year. 
People say, when will you stop? I said, when I drop. I'm going to do this till I die, God willing. It's just so important to realize how the church, sadly, throughout history, starting not long after the Apostle John's death, drifted slowly away, to, uh, away from the original Jewish context, the point where people don't even recognize the Jewish context of something as big as Pentecost, let's say, and how they're, they themselves, as people in a church, are very tied to Israel and to not just the country, but all Jewish people. And they have lost that. And so I just pray that although I see people in the church who don't really want to learn anymore, who don't have Bibles in churches, that there is so much treasure for those who will study hard and grow strong, which is the motto of Camp Shoshana. I want to invite you to take a look at our website, revelationstvseries.org. It's produced by Horizon Media Studios. It's a 501c3 media ministry, and what we're doing is helping other ministries tell their story. Homeless shelters and children's homes, Bible colleges, seminaries, mission sending agencies. With your help, we can continue to help tell their story to inspire the world, to shine their light, and let God get the glory for the work that's being done in advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ.